Hi everyone, this is John here from ContraBim and I wanted to do a really quick video on three tricks that I've picked up using the Marquee tool. Um, now these are tricks that I had no idea really even existed until recently, but as I've been going through and making some updates to my template, I've found some really useful uh, purposes for using this Marquee tool in some unique ways. So the first trick I want to show is how we can actually use the marquee tool from a 3D view to actually snip an image. Um, now you can see here um, as an example looking at some slate shingles you can see that these are the two roof elements and then down below here is actually a snipped image. So we can see that's just a pasted image from a marquee snip and so we are going to do the exact same thing for these three right here. Now to actually enter the 3D view, I'm actually going to just use the marquee tool to create my selection and then I'm going to hit my F5 key so that we can look at these three roof elements um, here in 3D. So, okay, so I'm going to change up a few things here real quick. First off, I'm going to switch this back to a 3D window style. Um, with no contours, we'll just leave this as kind of our, our texture. I'm also going to switch my view to AXO and I'll look at this from the top. And so finally, I'm just going to go in and we can adjust our uh, 3D window settings to look at this directly from the top. And I'm going to change this to 270 and I believe that's the correct orientation. Okay. So there we go. We're looking at this right from the top. And now we can take our marquee tool and I'm actually going to snap to this corner here. And essentially we can use this marquee to copy a snip just like we would with the snip tool actually in Windows. Um, I'm sure there's a, a Mac equivalent to it. But nevertheless, we can actually just use the marquee tool to make our selection. I'm going to hit Control C here to copy what's inside that marquee. And then we're just going to go back to our 2D view. And what's cool here is we can actually leave the marquee where it is. And if we let that remain, we can hit Control V and we can paste it directly inside the marquee as well, which is a really nice feature. So now that we've done that, I'm going to just take this, I'm going to pull it off to the side. And now I can really start comparing I want to make sure I click outside of it to finalize that that pasting there. I can really start comparing the pens and fills that I have in 2D. That I'm, my goal here is to get them to essentially align as closely as possible to the 3D texture. So looking at this here, I think this uh, cedar shingle is maybe a little bit too pink. So I might go in and now I can just make a quick adjustment. Let's go for something maybe a little bit more tannish. Let's try this one here. Oh, a little too gray. Let's try something else. Oh, how about, how about that? That's looking a little better. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so that's one trick for using the marquee tool. So essentially snipping from 3D and allowing us to paste in here. Um, a second trick that I wasn't planning on talking about, but we just kind of covered right there, is the fact that we can paste within a marquee as well. So that's another little trick there, a bonus trick, let's call it. Um, okay, so next up, let's uh, move up here. And I have a section placed that I want to talk about. So let's move all the way up here and let's look at some interior windows and storefronts here. So here you can see that I have some placed uh, storefront systems in some walls here. Um, it's kind of tough to see what they look like in this 2D view besides just zooming in and you know we don't get too good of a perspective on this. Certainly we can go and look at this in a 3D view and we'll do that here real quick. So again we're still on AXO. We can swing this around. Let's go back to perspective here. And so obviously now we get a nice clear view of what these systems look like. Some metal storefronts and some aluminum storefronts. But 
really what I want to do is be able to understand how this looks in more of a library format here. And so that's where I've come up with the second trick, which is going in, let's open up this uh, section and we'll zoom to it. And so now we have these storefronts in a sectional view. And one thing we can do, maybe let's turn on, let's go in and let's just turn on some shadows. It'll give it a little bit more interest as we're going through this. We'll turn on that, we'll leave those settings. So we'll add some shadows to this, you know, makes it look a lot, just a little bit more interesting anyway. Um, and again, I'm going to my marquee tool and we'll just do a selection around our grouping here. And again, I'm just going to, going to hit control C. And so that's going to actually copy the contents within that marquee. And let's go back to our 2D view here. And we can, I'm going to deselect my section and I'm going to hit control V and we're going to paste directly from that section. We can paste this right into our 2D view. Now, this is really nice for the purposes that I'm working through right now, just because it immediately tells us what these elements look like without having to go to 3D. So it just gives us a much better perspective of what's going on here. And how this gets translated is essentially these are a combination of fills and lines. So you can see that this is a background fill pattern. Um, it'll actually bring through um, whatever it's seeing here. So um, I think this should be like a fill. Well, I guess it's pasted them all as background fill, but it did bring through the uh, the fills associated with those materials for the aluminum or over in this case for the, the metal framed storefronts. Okay, so that's the second trick is essentially copying from a section and pasting fills and lines into um, really, you can paste that anywhere into a uh, onto a worksheet, um, onto a detail sheet, whatever you want to do. It's now picked up as lines and fills. So sometimes here, I'll just go through and delete out some of these, um, and just really use that to isolate what I'm looking at. So, okay, one more trick here. Let's zoom in and let's look at say some stairs. So. Um, going through and doing a lot of cleanup here on some stairs, definitely needing it right now. Um, but one thing that I wanted to do was create some sort of visual reference to tell me a little bit more about what these stairs look like. And so let's just pick up here. It's just a, a simple concrete stair. We can go to a, uh, we'll select that in 3d by just doing our marquee selection. So, okay, so now we have this view. Obviously, that's a very kind of raw, concrete type texture. Um, but one thing we can do, again, of course, we could go and just simply marquee and copy and paste using this so that we've already covered that. It's the same thing as before. So we'll show that just once again. Um, we can copy and paste directly from a marquee in a normal 3D view. So let's go, there we go. So, but that's, it's okay. It's, I mean, it creates that connection that I was looking for, um, but there's also another option here that we could do. And so we'll show that here in our next step. So, um, okay, so that's one version. We already covered that. Let's go back to 3D. So the other thing that I've realized that we can do here is if you actually switch over to a vector or a, uh, you know, a technical type drawing, a vectorial type view. So let's switch over to technical drawing here. Um, we can actually use the marquee within this type of view to actually copy over the line work. And this time when I hit control C, we actually get this new dialog box where we can go through and determine how we want to copy and paste. So if I'm painting a screen, uh, or sorry, I'm painting a screenshot here, it would just paint the vectoral as an image, I believe. If we switch this over to a drawing, then we can actually pick and choose what 
we want to have come through because well yeah i guess if we change those it automatically switches them over so it switches switched our uh our copy save as from a painted or painting screenshot to a drawing automatically so we can switch these over i can either pick to choose our 3d hatching none or converting our hatching to lines in this case it would actually draw lines for each little speck or triangle in this case for that concrete so we can skip over that and then we can determine what we want to do here whether we want to have overlapping polygons or calculate the split polygons and we can either either do framed or frameless so let's go through with these settings here so i just copied this now to clipboard we can go back to our 2d view this is probably going to paste much larger than i want but we can um, scale this down again so uh, let's just do center of current view okay and so we can see there our stairs are now pasted. I'm going to click outside of it. I'm going to undo it and then redo it so it selects it. And then I'm going to do a control K to scale this down just by picking a line, scaling this whole thing down. And now I have that same view, but this time in lines and fills so I'm going to scale this down let's let's match this up and we can make this overlap exactly well I may have covered up my reference point here but um, yeah I did I should have pulled it off to the side but somewhere over here I'm trying to match to that point now I can take it back so there we go and we can match this up and okay so now we can do a kind of a side by side if we wanted to do so you will notice here that we do have these little artifacts that came through as well that's one thing I've noticed with this uh, copying and pasting from section or 3d is you will get some artifacts but nonetheless we got that in here really kind of uh, served the purpose and um, yeah, that's something that I had no idea that you could do until recently. So thought I would share that with you. And hopefully you can find some useful uh, purposes uh, to help aid in either just enhancing your drawings or your visuals or um, extracting out content from your 2D or 3D views, your section or 3D views, I should say, um, into this type of format. So. Um, okay, hope you can use those. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Um, feel free to uh, let me know if you have any questions on this and good luck and uh, I'll catch you on another short tutorial video coming up here soon.